Hey, good afternoon, guys. Uh, thank you for joining in. My name is Amin Abdul. I'm the technology lead uh, for System Center uh, in XE IT Services. Along with me, we have Justin, uh, technical sales manager for S Vision. Uh, uh, we will be discussing about what S Vision Live Maps is and what are the new features uh, in version 7.2. Um, I'll give my give the stage to Justin to uh, to proceed with the presentation. Justin. Hi, I mean, thank you very much for the uh, introduction. Um, good day, everyone. Uh, good morning, good afternoon, um, whichever time zone you are in. Um, for those of you who have uh, uh, had the pleasure of meeting um, my colleague Walter Timmerman at some of the Exceed shows or um, uh, on site locally at your uh, your premises. Um, I will be glad to uh, take you further down the uh, road that is the Subvision Live Maps Tour. Um, I'm very thankful for Exceed for arranging this and um, I've heard from the team that afterwards there will be videos available if you'd like to uh, catch up on anything that's mentioned in here. Of course um, I will have at the end contact slides where you can reach out to the Exceed team or to us directly and we can provide you with extra information. Um, today we're going to look at one of the tools from Savision, being Live Maps, uh, the dashboarding and um, services uh, ranging layer for Microsoft System Center Operations Manager. And what we'll be looking at in this webinar is um, just a quick recap of what Live Maps Unity is. For those of you who have been using Live Maps for the past eight years. We will bring you up to speed in a nutshell. Um, there are quite a lot of changes compared to our product three years ago. In fact, um, you might be surprised uh, to, to understand that it's even gone in, got a new name called Live Maps Unity. Um, after which, we will then look at the out-of-box services, one of the newer features of Live Maps Unity, dynamically updating services, another new feature, HTML5 performance widgets, because we were asked for it for so much. .NET Application Discovery, um, which at the time of creating this presentation at the end of last year was a preview, but I'm glad to announce that if you are interested in looking at it, it is available on our web page um, as of today, um, as well as what we're planning for the next few steps. Um, if you'd like to follow on uh, on your own or you'd like to visit our product or see a live working operations manager environment, please feel free to head to our web page and um, examine the Try Now button. It will lead you into a fully functioning live maps product on our demo environment, which will be the same as what I'm showing you here. Um, you will only have access to the web browser version of live maps, as we will not grant you full access to Operations Manager. I'm sorry. If you'd like to have it on your own Operations Manager for testing or playing around, please feel free to contact the C team. Live Maps. What is Live Maps? Now, Live Maps started its life out in 2007, um, created by two consultants in Holland, Dennis Rethink and uh, Dawa van Fort, um, who worked for a company, um, EDS, at the time. And they were uh, consulting a lot of companies on installing, installing a product called uh, MUM in those days, uh, Microsoft's Operations Manager. And they came across a very common issue, which was that once it was installed and once all the alerts were gathered and it was fully working and doing what it needed to do, um, the technical team were incredibly happy with it. It was a very robust product. It still is today in its latest version. Um, but it, what they struggled at was being able to show that layer to the people that had paid the money for it, to be able to show management what was actually being monitored and what was up and running um, in MUM at the time, instead of just having them emails with us. Uh, management was asking for statuses. Hence, uh, during their installations, the team came up with uh, a layer which they sat on top of uh, Operations Manager, which became a visually dashboarding layer, uh, which was in those days referred to something else. But once they figured uh, it was a good tool and a lot of companies were asking for the solution, and EDS uh, collapsed and became part of HP, the two guys broke off and created a product called Live Maps and a company called Savision. That was in 2007. In 2000 and, um, 2000, uh, two years ago, so that's 2012, excuse me, 2000 and, yeah, 2012, three years ago now, um, the company uh, made a huge shift um, from being just a dashboarding tool in live maps. We started becoming 
and branch it out into what was uh, majorly seen as a big issue with operations manager at the time, which was the ability to uh, allocate the components into business services. A lot of companies these days are starting to look at monitored environments as instead of just a component that is alerted, so a network switch is down or a server is down, actually what is the impact to the business? A lot of the companies that we work with, such as the ones you see here on our board, have um, taken on our products to be able to provide them with a business layering solution nowadays, which is LiveMaps, which allows you to replace a lot of the hard work within Operations Manager to create a very simple overview for management, as well as a very effective layer um, to allow you to ascertain where the impact is of an alert. Don't worry, I'll explain in a little bit more technical detail shortly. Um, if your uh, company's name is on here, uh, congratulations. Hopefully you guys can check if you're on the latest live maps. If not, let me know. Um, just a little bit of the idea of where we go with uh, product live maps. Um, as you can see from the slide, there are many different people within a company, within a business that require information from IT. From the CIO, the guy who pays the bill and is responsible for the business and growing the business, right down to an engineer. You have service owners, IT managers, help desk people, and the engineers who have to fix the problems most of the time. Um, each one of these different layers within the company we have recognized require a different amount of information from operations manager. For example, a CIO is not too worried about the 6,500 alerts that come out first thing in the morning when you turn on monitoring, although an engineer is, because that is how you know, he fixes a problem by finding out what's wrong. Where CIO is more uh, worried about if exchange is down or if the website that you know uh, creates money for the company or allows the, the public to actually invest in the company is down. Uh, the longer that that is down, the more effect that will have on business. And then the more he will have to complain to the service owner, the more the service owner will have to ask questions as why it's down. And as you can see, the service owner's information is a little bit more detailed knowledge than what the CIO needs to, to see and he relates very easily to an IT manager. So you have different types of information from business impact to service levels to responsibility to priority to root cause. All of those information, each one of those individuals needs to receive at a different level. What LiveMaps allows you to do is create a business service management layer that sits on top of System Center Operations Manager and integrates with System Center Service Manager to allow you to ascertain and deliver the information in a very fast, very efficient method within your company, i.e. you can provide the CIO with a business impact. You can provide the service owner with his service levels, is he meeting them? You can provide the IT manager with uh, what needs to be fixed, what is getting fixed, what's currently very healthy, and you can provide the engineers and the help desk guys with the immediate root cause. And I'll show you how we do that by looking at our model shortly. Strangely enough, for those of you who have talked with Microsoft quite a lot, this is the ideal image of what Operations Manager and System Center should be doing. Now, uh, just to remind you, uh, Live Apps and Civision have been around since 2007. Um, we've had a very good growth year last year again, upon the release of our latest version of Live Apps Unity, and we are here to stay. Meaning that uh, this is something that Microsoft has always wanted to have within the product. But as you know, Microsoft makes a very good basic layer, and you need to go and fill it in with third-party products to make it do exactly what you want. We are the product that takes Operations Manager and makes it the actual communication tool that it needs to be. Let me show you how we do that. Before data becomes information, it needs to be structured. This is our structure, and this is similarly how we look at all of the impacts within uh, Operations Manager and System Center. When you generate an alert with Operations Manager, it can fall into one of three categories. One, does the alert affect end users? Does the alert affect the application layer? Or does the alert affect infrastructure layer within uh, a service? Um, this is strangely of how we actually interpret all the information within Ops Manager, and this is how our tool allows you to ascertain uh, components and place them within our structure very simply using a wizard. I'll show you what that will look like in the end. But as you can see, and as you know from experience, there can be a lot of alerts sitting in infrastructure, but the end user might still be able to access his web page or his email. There is no effect to the end user, even though there are a lot of hard disks that are filling up within the infrastructure. Being able to filter out the noise and actually see what the impact is to the service is a huge plus and will allow you guys to actually focus on 
delivering IT to the business, i.e. achieving SLAs. Let me show you what the structure looks like within Live Maps itself. There are many different ways to access our structure. There is a service dashboard. Uh, I'll just show the slide and then step into my operations manager to show you what that looks like currently uh, with Live Maps Unity. But just to give you an indication, there is a service dashboard which gives you an overlay of all the services. There's the ability to drill down within the service layer to individual component layers, so you can actually see which components are affecting the end user experience, the infrastructure, or the application level. Or you can take it to an intermediate level and show the service with just the affected components and their knock-on SLA effects. Um, Live Maps is still uh, started out as a dashboarding tool and is still commonly used as a dashboarding tool for very common, simple uh, views, like for example the rack and uh, data center view that you see on the left, as well as a simple CIO dashboard, um, as well as being able to allocate all your components. These are all still within our product, uh, what made us great in 2007 and still makes us great today. But um, what we actually started to do and where we're moving with with Live Apps Unity is taking over a lot more processes with an Ops Manager that people are finding very difficult to manage and do daily. For example, distributed applications, i.e. the part that uh, Microsoft sells in order for you to create this layer, uh, is distributed applications or groupings so that you can group the components into these layers. This actual uh, structured information or the way that we structure this is exactly how we structure uh, DA within Operations Manager, and Live Maps will replace your need to use distributed applications as each one of our services creates its own distributed application. Now for that, let me switch to my demo environment. So for those of you following online, this is uh, uh, this is the back end of our web page. You will be able to access everything I show you here through our web browser, which is the Live Maps web console, which gives you the full interactivity of what you've got from Ops Manager without the hassle of all the Ops Manager bits and, uh, and components on here. Just check that you guys can see the screen. So you should be able to see uh, System Center uh, Operations Manager 2012 console in front of you. As you can see here, this is a, a quiet demo environment for myself. I'm only sitting with about uh, four criticals at the moment. Let's have a look at where those criticals are sitting. Normally what you would do when you first come into the morning is you'd start looking at a list like this, which is a list of all the open alerts in the environment. And as you can see here, this is not a pretty picture for my environment. There's 28 alerts. Don't worry, no one will be fired. This is purely for demonstration purposes only. What I'd like to do is show you this list of alerts shown through you through the Live Maps Unity dashboard. This is the same list of alerts shown through a visual layer being our all services dashboard. This is what we commonly use for CIO, management, service owners as a very simple way to distribute services that affect them. This dashboard is interactive, i.e. when an alert is raised within a service, it will move the service up depending on its health status. So yellow is, as you can see, not at the top, red will move automatically to the top. If end user experiences are turned red as well as others, they will definitely be at the top and they will blink at you until you click on them, i.e. making sure that the people that need this information get the information to them as soon as possible. Let's have a look at one of the services. I'm going to drill down into order entry, which is a very simple web page service we've put together within our Ops Manager. And from here, I can now go to a service map. Now, this map we envisage a lot of service owners, a lot of SLAs, a lot of IT managers looking at for their individual service gives you all the information in one view of exactly what's going on in your service. So in here we can see the service is in a little bit of trouble because there is an infrastructure issue being with order entry web servers. Let's dive down into the infrastructure and see what that is. Here we can have a detailed layer of uh, information used for the help desk or used for um, engineers to go and find out what the problem is. This is why the service is only in yellow. Uh, let me have a quick look and see if the alerts are still showing. No, unfortunately, the alerts are now older than a month. Let's do all time. So there you can see the alert based around the components that you see on this view only. So there's only one alert. So already we are making it a little bit easier for people to see. Instead of looking at a list of 28 alerts, there's only one alert affecting order entry. If we think back to the main dashboard, don't worry, I'll go back there. There was only one other service that was affected by alerts. That was Exchange. So I can guarantee you the Exchange team is not having a good day today. 
But having a look at this alert, let's dive right down into the server level itself. And the server level tells us what the alert is. It's one out of our three web farm is down or in trouble. I can actually click on the alert and find out what the performance warning is. Exactly the same as I do with an ops manager. Now for those of you on the web page, there is a further step that you can do. I'll just switch to my web uh, console now <coughs> to show you the interaction that we have on the websites uh, that Live Maps automatically creates. So if you're currently looking for a way to be able to show this on a big screen or deliver it to your management or deliver it to service owners on their laptops or their desktops, you can quite simply give them the power of operations manager through Live Maps in a simple web page like this. Give them the full interactivity where they get all of the reports, all of the views instantly through a web page interaction um, right down into the infrastructure layer. So again, this is the same view I'm looking at, and here, even in the web page, I will still have a list of all the alerts. I've timed it for the last seven days, so this alert is older than a month. We won't be able to see it. But I can go from here, and I can fire off all of the operations manager tools that I love, including Health Explorer, Alerts View, Performance View, whatever you know ticks my box. I can also go a step further with Live Maps real-time dashboards powered by Vital Sites, which will open up another web browser being another dashboard that allows us to automatically connect directly to the server itself. This is a real-time connect. I actually have one open in the background that I prepared earlier. Uh, this is a real-time connect to the server and will open up a direct um, feed with the server itself to give you 15 seconds of information coming directly from that server as well as all the operations manager information uh, that is being collected in the KPIs. So what I can do is I can mix and match my dashboard straight here and I can start creating a dashboard that makes sense to me trying to troubleshoot this straight away. And I'm giving uh, the user all the power of SCOM so they get to see all of the uh, uh, SCOM uh, information in these uh, views if SCOM is gathering any information. So for example available memory you'll see that there's a graph that goes back a few uh, minutes. If I pull this back even further I start pulling operations manager alerts and warnings as well as service manager alerts and warnings. So this for example, well, this comes from the server itself, this is a log entry, this is the alert that was raised, ops manager hasn't picked it up but the server log is warning me that that is there and available. So I can start troubleshooting and luckily available memory is not a big problem for this server. I can also dive into databases as well as see the current services on there. This is all out of the box um, and connected straight away once you put the server within a service within Live Maps, you can drill right down to this dashboard and start looking at the server directly. Keep that in the background. As you saw through the web browser that I did here. Now, let's take a step back. Let me go back to my Ops Manager. I just want to go back to the service level because as I mentioned to you earlier, this dashboard gives the service owner um, all the information that he needs to see straight away, including um, very simple, all the alerts based around his service, so he's already got a thin down service level, but he has the ability to run a service level check, which is basically asking operations manager to run a SLA, SLO graph that I've set up, and as you'll see here in the bottom right, once ops manager is caught up, it will actually tell me that even though the service is in yellow, we're still hitting availability for the service, it is at 100% for January, Woo! even though that's only five days, let's take a look back in December, I'll make this a little bit bigger for everyone to see. And I can actually focus it on any perspective I put in here as well as other uh, SLA or SLO charts that I apply. So if performance is an issue for you, you can run that in Ops Manager and have it display here. And remember, this is also functionality within their web browser. So you're giving them the power to look at their own SLA, to see their average uptime, their total downtime, and if there's any breaches. Luckily breaches in December, so we don't have to worry about a breach. In January, I believe it will take us about 14 minutes before a breach is uh, affected, if anything hits critical level of the service. And you're giving them all of the power of their service, the ability to see, oh, seven hours even for the month uh, ahead of time, and you can break that down to one day, if that's important for the service. All of this information is within Ops Manager, and all of it is available for you to share. What we do is we make this very simple. This is 
quite simply a few clicks of a button and live apps will go and create these graphs and abilities for you as well as the dashboards and as well as this interactive dashboard for service. All you have to worry about is allocating the components into the service itself and live apps will do all the hard work including creating the distributed application for you. So in here you can see here's my exchange uh, DA. I won't pick that one because it's a rather large one. I'll pick the easier one which is order entry. There we go. And I will open up the diagram view to show you that it is actually a DA created by LiveApps. We do uh, change the icons at the top of the tree. So they fit, oh, that looks like a model I showed you earlier. So they fit very nicely into our structure to warn you that these are managed by LiveApps. The reason why that is so is that LiveApps also has the ability on the bottom layer, you noticed uh, uh, when I went all the way down to the infrastructure layer, on order entry to the uh, three servers, there is an ability within live maps to set up dynamic lists or dynamic uh, groups, which is what we're doing here, which means uh, this is a dynamic group, which means that if anyone comes in and adds a server that fulfills the dynamic relationship rule on this view, i.e. anything that is named UN web in it, it will automatically add the server to this group and to this DA and to that service, which means it is self-maintaining. Uh, if you uh, do a bit of extra work with live maps, so about five more minutes after running our wizard, which takes five minutes to run the service, you will have a self-maintaining monitoring environment that will keep itself up to date, keep its paperwork up to date, keep your services up to date, and keep the SLAs for the service owners up to date instantly. So if they come and remove a server, i.e. this one is still giving problems and they remove it out of there, all of this manages itself, which cuts down the amount of time you guys need to manage and maintain any of the information within Ops Manager. So actually what you're doing is making sure everything within Ops Manager and everything that is monitored is within a service so that it can maintain itself through live maps. The positive knock-on effect with that is that if you use live maps connected to Service Manager, we will automatically pump the relationships into Service Manager itself, which means that all of these services will be kept up to date in Ops Manager as well as in Service Manager. So if you need to take out a component, so for example this router let's say out of the service, you have the ability to do show related services here in Ops Manager as well as in the web console as well as in Service Manager and Service Manager will uh, with Ops Manager look at which services that component is part of and give you a list of them. Luckily for me it's only order entry but if this uh, router was located anywhere else um, in another service then that would be in this list. I could click on the service, navigate it and see what the effect would be if I had to take that router offline. Let's have a look at another example of that one. I will go into a geographic uh, view. Let's say we have our components layered in a data center view, like I have here. Um, this is a very simple map that you can place as a background within live maps, and you can roll up all of the groups of components to a single health state, as well as the network devices. I can drill right down into the health state for the group, which is this data center in New York, which you can see I have a background for all of the data center. I can drill right down to the rack. If I spend a bit of time placing the components, I know where they are on the rack because I put them there. Um, and you'll see there's a US router here, and I can do show related services. And strangely enough, that, that router is responsible for our web page service. So if someone goes to this rack and, and unpowers the rack, I know immediately what the, uh, what the knock-on effects are by knocking out those components, that service will be affected. And that is the power of being able to manage the services. And we will, as I said, pump those straight through to uh, Service Manager and keep your seem to be up to date. Which means Service Manager has then a very nice ability to show you all the affected CIs once the alert is raised. Combine that with the fact that what we also do is allow you to turn off this noise instantly by allocating them into services. You can then switch on active service alerts so you will receive one email for your uh, service. So as you can see here, there's 28 criticals that are in my environment. One of them affects order entry, and the rest are all sitting in Exchange. Exchange is a bit of a beast. So what we'll do here is we'll uh, have a look at what the alert is. This is the alert that we actually pump the service manager instead of all of the 27 alerts that Exchange are doing. In that alert, you get within service manager to click a link, which will show you the full service through your web browser. 
and will show you all the affected service components, all of the alerts for the service instantly. And as you can see, it's not an infrastructure problem. Yay! It's an application layer, which at this stage we don't know if it affects uh, the end user, because I'm still busy setting up end user perspectives in my Ops Manager. But I can dive into the application layer, and I can see exactly where the effect is. And as you can see, there's a bit of red all over the place. I can dive down into an individual component. And because Live Apps has gone and created dynamic lists here for me, this is all up to date. So already I can see, actually, it's not as bad as it looks. I just need to go and fix a couple of components, and this is up and running. Or I can remove them from my monitoring if they're not part of the service. And there we go. That is now one alert that goes out through you through a mailbox that within three clicks I'm right down to the root cause and I can start troubleshooting it from here. Either through my web browser, through service manager, or through ops manager. Whatever you prefer. And that is the power of, of live maps. Within a couple of minutes of installing onto ops manager, you can have this full overview done. And you can start sharing it with people. We fall in line with anything that you set up. So this dash, uh, security wise I mean, so this dashboard will actually only show you services that you allocate to the people that have the login. So if you only want to show your CIO four services, but you want to have access to all of them like I do, that is possible as well. They will only get a list of the four services and their current health states um, that you allow them on their login. That is Live Maps Unity today out of the box. So those of you who have used Live Maps before, that is quite a big, tremendous thing because all of those dashboards I show you create themselves. You only have to worry about the lower level dashboards and the components being in there. If you have any questions at this stage, please feel free to uh, write them in the chat. I'm sure that the team from Exceed will make sure I get hold of them. Uh, if, they could, uh, if you do have any questions, guys, please let me know, and I'm more than willing to answer them at this stage on live maps. What I'd like to do now is I'm going to dive into the new features of 7.2. So one of the first new features that we've got in Live Maps is um, the ability to dynamically template our services. What that means is that uh, once we uh, start creating the business service allocation layer for Ops Manager, we've got a lot of requests from our customers to actually automate some of the services that they were regularly having to look at. Think Link, think Exchange, think you know any Microsoft service out of the box. You guys all have them. Why can't we just make it simple that you just create dashboards for them and the components automatically allocate? That's a fair question. We can do that from a live apps point of view because we've been doing installs of customers for the last 14 years. We're pretty certain we know which components belong where. Uh, we've also got some feedback from customers with very challenging environments to allow us to create very simple out of the box services. What that means is that all those dashboards I showed you will be visible to whoever you want within a matter of three clicks. I'll show you shortly. Right now, we're currently focusing on Active Directory, Exchange 2013, SharePoint 2013, and I believe this month we're about to release Link. Um, so that will be a new service added to Live Apps, where you can target Live Apps to the service, to your management pack, and it will go and generate all the service dashboards straight away. You can still alter it, you can still change the SLAs, you can still change the views however you want them. In fact, a lot of the customers using uh, SharePoint, you, our SharePoint will look at SharePoint as one service within your environment, but you can allocate the service out and look at it SharePoint per farm. So that's possible as well. A lot of customers do that. We just save time for you having to recreate all the views and all the dashboards. You just press a button and you can copy the rules across. It's deployed using a wizard in the Authoring Console. I'll show you that shortly. Templates can be customized afterwards, as I mentioned, and includes rich visualizations. Just to give you an idea, the Exchange one you saw earlier, that is actually out of the box Exchange 2013, that dashboard will be generated and all the components will be allocated automatically. In the background here, you can see the one for Active Directory, which I believe leaves me with uh, one more to show you, which I'll show you shortly. which is SharePoint. So SharePoint 2013, this is the service that generates automatically out of the box. And on the application layer, this is the dashboard that you'll get to see. So you don't have to spend uh, hours trying to create or allocate the components. We allocate that automatically. I have a question coming in. I have a few questions, actually. Uh,
So uh, one of the questions I have here is how much time does it create uh, these views? I was, um, I, what I'll do is I'll answer that question by quickly moving with the, uh, the wizard creation for this, and you will see what it is. Um, there is a second question. I'll come back and answer that one shortly. So let me dive into uh, live maps on my laptop and show you live maps the authoring application. So this is the application that sits on any laptop or any desktop. It'll, it's basically a drawing tool that allows you to access your data warehouse, pull all the components. You'll see them listed uh, down here where you can then allocate them. Uh, so this is a list of all my demo computer components in my environment. And then I can allocate them to groups or to dashboards or to views, however I wish. Um, that, so for example, if I create a view, let me take a very easy one, uh, the rack view, for example, and open that one up. My maps will now access my lap, uh, my SCOM lap view, sorry, my uh, rack view in SCOM, and allow me to edit this. And that's quite simply, if I want to add a new server on here, I drag and drop it, and it will allocate the component on there. I can then edit it. So I can do show the image or move the image. I can move the naming convention to the right. Uh, right. And then voila, I've added that component to this rack. And as soon as I press save, that will get saved within SCOM. If it's part of a, di a distributed application or service, that will get uh, saved in distributed application. And if that service is connected to service manager, it will automatically be connected. So if auto ticketing is up and running, immediately that component will start uh, raising tickets for you in Service Manager. That's the hard and complicated way. In the latest uh, feature, which I wanted to show you, is you have the ability within services to discover a service, create a service, or import a distributed application. So for those of you who've worked with distributed applications in the past, don't worry, don't cry, you don't have to throw them away. You can run live apps wizard import DA and it will do a one-off read of the DA. Um, or if you have a, uh, for example, Exchange or Operations Manager, Microsoft very cleverly with their uh, uh, management pack automatically create their own distributed application groups, you can get live apps to read them and auto-update on them. A little bit more about that later, because I think that's one of the new features we have. But uh, Discover a Service, this is, uh, to answer the question of how quick it is to set that up, Live maps uh, take you a few seconds to read through this. Uh, I've read through it a few times, so I'll skip this if you don't mind. Uh, just telling me what it's going to do. Uh, I can target the service I want. Uh, in this case, you'll see that Exchange is not here because I've already run that in my environment. I can target Active Directory. And unfortunately, Live Maps will do a check and spot that my demo environment does not have the management pack for it. If it did, it would confirm yes, it could go forward. You then press Finish and uh, five to ten minutes later, depending on how fast your operations manager is with creating VAs, you will have the service populated within your environment, which then looks like this within Live Maps, which allows you then to go in and create these nice dashboards. So you can swap out the backgrounds, you can change the components, you can uh, allocate the components yourself. That is uh, basically how hard it is to create a service or so exchange. All you have to worry about is the management pack is in there. I'll just change another map. So we take data center, just put that as a background image, and as you can see, I can quite simply edit again manually over here. Um, if I want to change the SLAs, the SLA part is in here is available as well, and this edits and updates Ops Manager, so I can drop down infrastructure down to a reasonable level. Out of the box, we do 99. Uh, for end user experience, that's very handy, but for other areas, it might be safer for you to lower that until you guys start achieving a little bit higher SLAs with your team. This is the security level that we take over from Ops Manager, so you get to allocate the services to a CIO, to help desk engineers, quite simply by clicking on the tick boxes and pressing save, and we go do all the hard work within the scope. The notifications, so we had another email uh, uh, question. I'll come back to that question shortly, but it is sitting in here. Uh, these are the notifications that we switch on for the services. So as you saw in my Ops Manager, instead of 28 alerts, I will get one alert for the service, uh, and I can switch on what type of alerts it is and which areas will alert me. So I can quite simply knock everything out if all I'm interested in is if the service is available to end users and its uh, availability, or if performance will affect for the end user. 
This means I will maximally only ever get two email alerts for the whole service, no matter how many components are in there. But as you saw, within the email alert, I can click on a link, and I can go straight to the dashboard and see all of the alerts that are still available. So that's still possible. Now, the question that I had in here was, how long does it create the service? Um, that is the discovered service. So those are the services out of the box, the new feature. We also have create service, which is quite simply if you want to create your own service. This is the wizard that you run through. Just to give you a full comparison of how slow this one is compared to that one, I'm just going to run a simple service called test, create a new management pack for this, so it makes it easier for me to delete afterwards. I can then target the components that are available within my environment. So in here, I have a drop-down list of all of the components that are available in Scope that are being monitored. If I want these, let's say I'm going to make an Operations Manager uh, service, I'll take the components that apply to Operations Manager, so the Database Watcher, uh, Web Console, I think is one is in here, yeah. and the Reporting Console for Operations Manager. These are all provided by the management pack within Scope, and quite neatly, once they're just discovered by Scum, I can then place them into my service and make them part of my service and they will start showing live health. So these are the three components I want as an end user experience in my service. I then hit next and I go through the same process again for application. Uh, let's say uh, demo databases for the purposes of a quick and easy one. I can drag and drop the databases that I want on here. I can do a search, whatever makes life easier. And once I've got a couple of databases on here, I can go to the infrastructure components. I can also do other components like websites or uh, Windows services that are running on there. Any, uh, the, bit, the more complete I make the applications layer, the more perfect this comes out, which is uh, Live Apps will see the relationship between server and service component or data, database in this case, and will auto-populate the servers in here. If I want to add more components like uh, switches or routers, for example, or more servers, I can quite easily easily manually add that. And then I'm done. And then my service needs to be created by Live Apps and installed within Ops Manager. And that takes about five to ten minutes. I won't bore you with that doing it on my laptop because my laptop takes a bit longer, not being a fully server oriented Ops Manager. But that's quite simply how you create a service. To make it fully functional um, in the fact that it, it can uh, run itself, what I recommend is going into the service afterwards. You can also run a blank service then adding membership rules. And membership rules are our automatic discovery rules that allow you to load any class into here, apply a filter into it. So I'll just wait for my laptop to catch up, but it should load in Windows uh, classes straight away. I can apply a filter being a naming convention if my servers are named uh, demo, for example. Let's see if that actually uh, does anything. No. Let me change it to display name. Any component known to the management pack is in there. Uh, let me take my demo computers. Let's see if that works better. So these are all the classes. Uh, I can quite simply press this uh, button and find any class discovered in SCOM uh, by my pack. Display name contains demo. Let me do that as wildcard. See if I'm spelling my file correctly. I'll get a list of all components, so these are all the servers that are in here. Let me take NL, just to show you Dutch ones. And once I press OK, Live Maps will allocate them to this view automatically. So that means if anyone comes and puts in another server with NL as a name, it will automatically be added to this group. And this is how you can make Live Maps self-aware, self-sufficient distributed applications as well. Once I press Save, all of these rules apply, and this view will apply. This is not what I want because this is not the view that uh, is very good for demo purposes, but hopefully that answers your question of how easy and how quick it is to create live apps. If you were timing me, I just created two services within a matter of 10 minutes, uh, of which both of them have their own distributed applications. If I spend another 10 minutes on them, they will become fully uh, self-aware distributed applications as well. Now there was a second question that I had on here. Um, in case of a critical issue, how does your system notify the administrator? We use the exact same principles that uh, SCOM does. So all we do is we just make the information a bit easier. So for example, um, going back to my services here, uh, let me go back to SCOM. If a alert is generated uh, within a service, you can either use the simple old alert issues, but you will still fall into the alert storming or have 2,000 
uh, alerts to look at and be lost within the forest. Within our version, uh, a lot of customers actually switch off active alerts for the service owners or for the help desk and switch on subscriptions for active service alerts, which is an email subscription that you can set up with an Ops Manager. Um, that means that if a service, so if any one of these boxes turns yellow or red, um, an alert will be generated within SCOM and that alert will be emailed out. And that email looks exactly as I showed you here for Exchange. Uh, oh. This will be the actual alert being emailed to the customer if they want subscriptions. You can also get a service manager uh, to subscribe to these alerts or any other ticketing system you have. We've got a lot of customers that use other service desks currently. Uh, and the subscription email alerts works just fine for that as we set up a link within the email alert. So all you have to do is set up that a ticket is raised. With Service Manager from Microsoft, there's auto ticketing happening with Ops Manager. And we have a connector which will hang this alert and the affected CIs into that ticket as well. So that ticket will automatically be raised to Service Manager and your help desk people will be aware of it as well as have a link that they can see this dashboard straight away through web browser. Those are the two ways. Um, that most customers use us to uh, identify people uh, of the alerts. Obviously, there's a third and fourth way. Uh, the third way being a giant screen uh, in your dock environment with all your services layered on it. And if a service changes red, unfortunately, I can't activate one at the moment, but the service will move up and it will blink at you on the screen. And then your end users can on their own laptops navigate to the service and start troubleshooting but on your giant screen you will be bringing to their attention that a service has just gone critical or uh, warning state is possible. Um, the fourth way, which is a way that we've uh, incorporated because most people are mobile these days, in the second to locate it, um, I think I actually have it here as the fastest way. With live maps you have the ability to also switch on live maps mobile uh, which is uh, quite simply um, a application that sits on an iOS or a Windows phone or uh, uh, an Android phone and it allows you to subscribe quite similar to the email alerts that we uh, uh, that Ops Manager used allows you to subscribe to your service within Live Maps so for example SAP web store email uh, order entry uh, exchange whatever service you have set up your, your users can, uh, you can allocate the service to them in their login. Once they log in with the application, they have access to the services. They can subscribe to whichever part of the service they want. So they can just go for end user experience if they like, or they can go for the full service uh, view. If the service changes state, i.e. goes to critical, you will get a pop-up on your screen. You'll get to drill down into your list of services. You'll get to see what is caused the critical and actually the alert itself. The bad news is you can't troubleshoot from your phone yet but I know Microsoft are working on that. Um, you can, of course, if you have a Silverlight-based uh, system, you can operate um, live maps, uh, real-time dashboards, or the SCOM web console from your mobile phone. I would suggest not doing that because um, your mobile carrier will have a field day and charge you lots of money for that. It's probably more advisable to get hold of a laptop and connect VPN in. But we provide you with the alert directly on your phone to ask when it happens. So we're about speeding that up and the application can be used by as many people as possible. Uh, for us, we don't worry about the number of services, we just worry about getting a message to them as fast and as smooth as possible. And those are the four ways that you could share them. Hopefully that answers the questions. Um, please keep them coming. Uh, I'll step back to here. So out of the box services, we talked about it. I showed you um, uh, SharePoint, Active Directory Exchange. They take about five minutes to set up. Um, if you're not happy with the individual components or your service owners want specific other measures within the company, which is all the case, it will take you about five to ten minutes later to go and re-change those. Uh, what most of the time you guys will be having conversations about is what to actually show the owner. And that's where, unfortunately, we can't judge the amount of time. Each individual audience requires a different dashboard uh, or different information. But as you saw, live apps is very simple, drag and drop, and you're there. You're 99% there. You still need to have that 1% conversation with the end user. These services out of the box will help speed that information up. So if you just started out with Ops Manager 2012, within half an hour you can have these three services shown to your service owners and you can start getting them to buy in and help you with those conversations straight away. And you turn off the noise instantly. Remember, this is a lot of red, but it's only one email alert that's going out to your users. 
so they're more likely to listen to you. Dynamically updating services, ah, that was what I touched on, on the other service. So we have the ability to look into distributed applications, including those made by third parties. Uh, so for example, Impact, uh, Operations Manager, that's what you'll have always. Um, and there's other companies like uh, Blue Stripe, for example, they make a very good uh, discovery model uh, that creates distributed applications within the Ops Manager. We have the ability to dive in there, read the distributed application, and create the service dashboards and views and availability reports for you instantly. Uh, the bonus about this new feature is that not only can we go into manufacturer created uh, distributed applications that allow you to edit them in a live batch model, uh, you can also make your own model out of their DA, as well as you can target live apps to re-update to that management pack. So that means if Exchange comes along and discovers four new servers or four new users or four new components, their distributed application will be up to date. That is why you cannot uh, use their distributed application because it is self-maintaining. But live apps will reread it and re-update our uh, distributed application, meaning that your service dashboards will be updated as well. So you're constantly one for one with the management pack. So that is a very efficient way to make sure that your distributed applications are always up to date with the manufacturer's creative management pack. Uh, you can still do it uh, enriching manually using LiveMaps Authoring Console. And as I mentioned, vendor management packs should produce more dynamic DAs, uh, which you are not allowed to use generally because uh, the way they work. Uh, we do allow you to use them through LiveMaps because we create a single uh, DA. We will require LiveMaps to edit it afterwards. Uh, enough said about that. I, I won't go through the wizard. I showed it to you earlier, which is just targeting the DAs within your system. Um, just to give you an idea of what that would look like. So you can take uh, the DA itself. Um, you can find the hosted infrastructure automatically through the management pack, and it will allocate, uh, LiveMaps will allocate the components into the end user application and the infrastructure role uh, manually. If it is having trouble with that, uh, for example, a distributed application uh, or, a, sorry, a management pack discovers components that we're not aware of, you will still get questioned by live maps as to which component this belongs in. So you still have full control. So for example, if you want databases to be your end user experience for SQL, for example, you can still have that happen. You do not have to stick with our, our model. We just make our model very easy to understand for most customers. HTML5 performance widgets. So uh, you may have noticed during our uh, presentation that some of the views that I showed you uh, required Silverlight startup. That's correct. Uh, being a Microsoft aligned uh, company up until last year, we uh, chose to uh, stick with Silverlight because that was Microsoft's push and Operations Manager still requires you to have it, including Operations Manager DNext uh, for what we be default. So uh, we've been approached by a lot of our customers who've had a lot of experience with HTML5 being faster uh, to provide them with even faster uh, web experience for our dashboards. We've done that last year. We took the first step. Uh, we've actually added performance counters to our views, which I'll show you shortly, uh, which are shown in our HTML5 performance widgets. Now, this is going a little bit ahead of the presentation. We like that a lot, and we are looking at doing that more for a lot of our existing Silverlight requirements. So for the, you, those of you who are burning to ask me the question of when will we uh, uh, not require Silverlight, very near future. Um, so we are looking to step completely into HTML5 to allow you to have us uh, right now on all of your uh, iPads and iPhones, be the only uh, remote device that uh, does not support Silverlight standard. Um, right now, though, we are still available through any web browser. Uh, so Safari, Chrome, and uh, Internet Explorer, and uh, Spartan, the latest one that uh, Microsoft is releasing, we will support to show you the dashboards. We currently support right now, so uh, don't worry about that. The HTML5 just gives us a little bit extra edge. Uh, right now we're showing performance data from the data warehouse through it. Uh, this allows us also to go back one year, which is even more effective than what Operations Manager allows you to do when you set up performance graphs. That will only show you one week due to the fact that you don't look at the data warehouse through those performance graphs. And it is likely fast. Uh, these are what the widgets will look like, but uh, I'm more for show and tell. So I'm just going to switch to my web browser version of Live Apps to show you. And I will locate where we've got this very cleverly shown. 
So if you are following online uh, through our web uh, online interface and you come to this page, it will be your first entry point. If you go through uh, dashboards, the bottom left, and then right click on the IT dashboard, not the CIO dashboard, which is really nice and colorful, but the IT dashboard, the ones that uh, make sense more, you can click down onto Windows Server, so as you can see there's an issue going on there at the moment, and you'll get a dynamic list of all our service and Windows uh, running the components as well as uh, processes on there, and hard drives. This is quite a large list, so you can imagine you get lost in uh, you know, the visibility of where that uh, alert is. You can thin this list down by knocking out the healthy components for now in the view, and you'll see that there's only one warning sign in here through one of the, the servers. Oh, it's not a bad problem then. I can actually do it another way is show myself the alert list of what's going on at the moment. So host one, shell script has failed. Oh, that just needs to be turned off then. Uh, and this is where the performance counters are. It's quite uh, cleverly, here's the HTML5 uh, widgets that you'll see, and we've targeted them to some of the components. You target this through the Live Apps authoring console, so uh, your end users don't have the ability to mess around with the information here, except that they get to move the graphs back in time for their troubleshooting. So they can look at process and percentage logical disks. Whatever information is being pulled by Ops Manager is visible here, and they can go back further than a month, three months, six months, and a year. I'll click on a year, but I will be honest, my demo environment hasn't been pulling information for a year as we regularly rebuild it, the data warehouse. So as you can see, since our last rebuild, we haven't got any information. I think that was about three months ago. And this is as fast as HTML5 is for the data warehouse. That's not bad, pulling all of those servers on there. Um, if you need to individualize a component, you can just leave your mouse over it, hover over it, you'll get the information. We are working on the vNext of this one, and that is a request that we've already had, is being able to isolate an individual component by clicking on it here, by having it in a graph. I cannot promise it, I have put it through the development team, and they're very excited by it. So if you guys have any requests, specific requests on performance counters that you'd like to see, let us know. Um, I'm just going to step over to my live maps drawing part to show you um, how we can apply a performance counter matrix. It's quite simply here, the membership rules, and I can go to performance counters, add a performance counter, and then I can target any performance counter for any component of this view. So I need to make sure that my servers or my uh, uh, switches are on there. Fortunately, I don't think I'll have any matrices on here, so let me pull one. Um, let me pull a Windows uh, server. And then what I'll do is I'll go into that server and I will pull out the hard drive from there, so the C drive, and I will pull out the uh, operating system because that will give me some performance counters as well. And then once I'm happy with that, I'll go to performance counters. Don't worry about the artistic level on this one. Um, you can always come back and re-edit. I'm just doing this purely for your, your, your demo pleasure. Um, so I'll target the logical disk. Hit next, live maps will go to SCOM and ask SCOM what is currently being monitored in performance. I pick a couple, multiple, single one. I get a few options in here, which we are going to look to expand, but display value for each instance, average value, all instances. Hit next, and live maps will produce a summary down here in the authoring console, which will give you that full ability that you saw in the web browser, which is also available in the SCOM version uh, of the dashboard as well. Keep in mind, this is just a preview, so I can't go back into the data warehouse information. Once I press save, if I'm happy with this performance counter, you can. And that is as simple as it is for us. Uh, keep the questions coming. I'll just check if there are any more at the moment. I have a question here, which is, is it possible to set a business process to escalate notification if the administrator does not resolve it within a period of time? Um, from an operations manager and a live apps point of view, no. Um, this is all managed by service manager itself. Um, so once the ticket is raised within service manager, you can set up service levels, um, and those service levels will continue raising and continue alerting. Uh, what we do is initially warn you of the state change itself, and that is the same as Ops Manager, it will only warn you on a state change. Unfortunately, if you have a knockdown effect from the state change, you will keep getting warnings from Ops Manager. From us, if your state change is already in red, 
um, you will uh, you will see on your screen uh, the service or the component uh, will blink at you. Unfortunately, I can't activate one now to show you uh, in this demo environment. Uh, let me just go back to the service. Do that through Auto Manager. That's faster for me at the moment. So uh, these boxes will actually blink at you. So if other components keep fading out, you'll still get the alerts and they will still keep blinking till you click on them. Uh, the escalation part, if you're looking at escalating through continuously emailing or phoning a, a person, there are a lot of other third-party products out there that are very good at it. I would highly recommend uh, a company that we constantly uh, work with our customers with, uh, Durdac. It's a German company based on delivering service level warnings uh, from service manager to your operators. And their tagline is they will guarantee 100% reception. Um, so what we do is make sure that the alert makes sense. If you need to ensure that it gets to someone in a period of time, I would recommend looking at service manager add-ons. Uh, I've got a question of what is the licensing model uh, for Live Apps? Live Apps is licensed as a perpetual uh, model. Um, so you will have permanent access to the product itself. Uh, we license per number of views. And a view is um, any one of these uh, dashboards. So for this, for example, is one view in our licensing. And each one of the groups that you have underneath here, so the end user experience, this group of components is a view. So as you can see, a simple service will take four views. A complicated service like Exchange can take anywhere up to 26 views. And we sell in bundles of views. So you will get access to a number of views to cover a number of services, um, and you can increase the number of views as your service grows uh, by purchasing more bundles. Um, you're not limited by the number of components or the number of users that have access to this. We don't care. We, in fact, we want you to share the information, so we don't target you by numbers of uh, people that uh, get to see it or numbers of components you put on here. And because we're perpetual, you will always have access to that view bundle. So if you purchase, I think the smallest ones are 25 view, but most customers will purchase 100 view, which covers about six services to start with. Um, you get uh, the ability to use up to 100 views within your services, and you get to re-edit them, and they will create the distributed applications for you. Uh, for more information on how we are licensed, I would recommend reaching out to Exceed uh, or to your account manager, Wild Timber, who can provide you with a little bit more of an idea. If you'd like some help in finding out how many uh, licenses you'll need from Live Maps, I'm always available to help you uh, with installing onto your own environment. Within a couple of minutes, we'll be able to give you a good rough idea. Uh, next question: Can we have top in the performance charts? Um, not entirely certain what that question is referring to. Uh, are you looking at top um, used? or are we looking at top availability uh, for the performance charts? Uh, I'll just quickly jump to my performance charts. Uh, <coughs> so, uh, what we have here is I showed you the ability to um, group the components. You can target an individual component if you want to have a specific component show in the charts. Um, right now, uh, we are. this is the version one that we've released, so version two of the performance charts will see a lot more improvements. I have had a similar question from someone saying, can you show the top five? Um, currently, it is possible within an Ops Manager dashboarding to do that. Um, as that's quite simply a list of uh, what's performance time. Uh, we can uh, actually have a hyperlink on our dashboard to take you to that view. So if you have them set up already, you can target the view again through a live apps and have it shown. Um, similar, the next question comes, can we have pie charts and power charts? Uh, currently, right now, you can hyperlink to a, a pie chart within Ops Manager. In the next version of live apps, we will be looking at doing that. Um, we have had the request for pie charts and bar charts in there. The bar chart is available in the SLA part, as you saw for the service. So you can target performance counters into the SLA and have that on the top level as a bar chart right now. So yes, that is possible. The pie chart is something that we're a little bit struggling with. And I'll be honest about it. When it comes to performance over time, 
uh, a pie chart will only show you a yes, no. So if you hit it or not, which is what our green boxes and red yellow boxes look at. Uh, I know management wants to see pie charts, which is very nice. A percentage of time that is hit. Um, what we've chosen to do is actually show that through our SLA charts, as um, uh, as you can see here. You know, percentage of uptime, percentage of downtime, to actually give them an exact value uh, instead of them having to look at a pie chart and simple. So they can look at this in real time on availability. But if you do want to create pie charts or views for your uh, management at the moment as reports, you keep in mind you can target all of these groups within live maps. So you can even target the end user perspective of order entry or this full DA or this full service and get operations manager to run that report. And it will show it to you in the pie chart as to what you've hit. So basically, you'll just take this number, average uptime or total downtime, and create a pie chart for you. In this case, it'll look very green. Yay. Um, we are looking for that in the near future, but as I said, we are struggling with the pie charts when it comes to performance over time. Uh, top number for counter values. Thanks for that clarification. Um, currently, right now, we don't have that in there. Um, as I said, you can target a uh, SCOM performance uh, report through Live Maps, so you can hyperlink within Operations Manager within Live Maps dashboards itself. But I will take that under consideration and pass that on to my development team. Um, I'm sure they're getting requests like that in every single day because actually performance charts are some of the ones that we've been asked about the most. So I would not be surprised if uh, our next next release will see a lot more improvement within the performance charts itself. Keep the questions coming. I think I've answered the ones that are out there at the moment. Um, so I'll pop back to here. I'm really glad to see there was a lot of activity around the performances. That means that we're on a good track. Um, .NET application discovery, one of the next ones. So this was a preview last year, and I'm glad to say it's actually available for you now. If you go to our downloads webpage, you can download this component. Um, it's currently a separate feature, but within our next release, which will be happening at the end of this month, beginning next month, it will be a full-blown feature within the product, so it will be part of the initial install. What we were asked, uh, strange enough, you guys asked the question at the beginning is how fast does it take to create a service? We have our wizard. You saw we do it within five minutes. It's not fast enough. Strangely enough, we've been asked by a lot of customers to look at um, trying to auto-discover some of the uh, components in services as well, particularly when it comes to web page services, because those can be a bit of a nightmare. Because as you see, it's not very hard to run up a ISS web page. Uh, hang components into it, hang a SQL uh, database on the back end, and start going. Unfortunately, the monitoring team needs to catch up with what's just happened, and that can be a bit of a mess. So what we've done with our first release for the uh, for a auto discovery feature is we've looked at .NET application, and we've created the ability that you can run within Ops Manager through a single button, a live maps auto discovery, targeted to a website. It will build the application dependency maps. It will find the relationships between the web application SQL backends. It will even uh, use all of the SCOM agents to do that. So it's actually getting SCOM to discover more than what the SCOM management packs will do for this. And it builds an intermediate DA. So currently, right now, in our preview, we're building a separate DA within SCOM with all the relevant components, which you then target in live maps to populate your service instantly. Um, with our next VNext, we're looking at removing that so there's no two-step in it. It's a one-step, so it goes even faster. Um, but uh, we will automatically update the DA with our discoveries. You can choose to run the discoveries. We, I think, out of the box, we currently look at that order discovery once per day. Uh, you can shoot that right down to uh, what we recommend, 30 minutes uh, maximum, is, is the lowest you can go. Just keep in mind, the more that you get into order discover, the more work that SCOM needs to do for you and the slower SCOM will become. But um, what it does is it will do a one-off discovery, uh, install the DA, and then you will be able to see that in the service automatically. And that will be pumped to service manager straight away through our connector. Um, this is what uh, the DA looks for, the web page that we tried on our one. Uh, so as you can see, it's a very simple web cycle fulfillment. It has two backend SQL databases, two services it runs on. Discovery result from the databases, the service, the web page, as well as the services, the ISS web server the SQL server itself, and the service for SQL, and created that DA, which we then uh, added into our uh, live maps view as a service. 
Uh, the one component that is missing from this one, which you still need to do natively, is create a web page monitor check, which you can then apply to the end user experience within the service, i.e. you can tell management the web page is available to anyone from inside your network or outside your network. Any questions on the order discovery? So I believe I'm now, oh, I see a question pop up. Um, Without looking at the question, I'm assuming it's going to be what's your next step. We are looking at uh, JavaSoft, uh, sorry, Java, and we are looking at uh, ASP as well, uh, but I can't say which ones will come up first. Uh, we actually have an internal competition with our teams right now as to see who can get the first discoveries out there. Um, keep in mind there are uh, much better uh, discovery tools out there than us. We are taking our first steps into it. Um, but the good news is we can basically change around the components and make the features work very fast. Just as a quick wrap up, I've talked about it quite a bit. We are going to do support for service relationships as a new feature, which means right now you're looking at the dashboard with all the services in the list. Um, uh, we've been requested that if one service goes down, it actually has a knock-on effect within other services, think DNS, think network. Um, we will be adding end of this month, another column on there which will actually show you related services, which means that if network goes down and six other services go down, live apps will bubble um, network to the top of the dashboard and will highlight that box red, so if you fix the network, you have a good chance of fixing the other services instantly. We will be doing more out of the box services as I mentioned, and there will be the next .NET application discovery which will be the full packaged service feature. Hopefully this was informative for you guys. If you'd like to try it out, um, there is our online demo, uh, which I've walked through. Um, you're more than welcome to drop an email to the Exceed team, uh, or to me directly, or uh, your sales representative for submission, Martin or Timmerman, and we will arrange a copy for you to uh, have a trial on your own environment. Good news is we don't need any extra infrastructure. You have everything we need running. You have a SQL database, you have SCOM. We sit on your laptop, and we just talk to it and create the DAs in your own data warehouse. So there's no extra needs with it. Within about 15 minutes, you're up and running after the install. And about 15 minutes later, you should have two services fully set up, as well as email uh, allocations uh, done as well within subscriptions. But don't take my word for it. Challenge us, and I'd be willing to take up that challenge and approve concept for you guys. Just let us know when you are available. Thank you very much for listening. Uh, thank you, Exceed Team, for this time. I think my hour is up. Thank you, Justin. Thank you all for coming.